continue this series that just started last Wednesday. Uh, we did kind of an introduction on spiritual gifts, and the title of the message tonight is Wisdom and Knowledge. And I'll tell you right off, it's a little uh, maybe confusing because it's like, is this a spiritual gift, having wisdom or having knowledge, or is it that having wisdom and knowledge is the first step of having whatever gift, because it seems like every spiritual gift the Lord gives us might require a bit of wisdom and knowledge. And so I've got some questions on that, but we're going to read this from the text and look at some different passages of Scripture and tell you a little bit uh, about what I think about this and and uh, most importantly, consider the things that we know are true from Scripture. I don't have to think on those things. All right, 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, you don't have to stand, I'm just going to read a couple verses. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Okay, so if you're saved, you have the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost within you is going to enable you to do uh, other things. It says, so uh, now uh, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God that worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Now, this is the main verse that we want to look at tonight. For to one is given by the Spirit of the Spirit, I'm sorry, to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the worker, workings of miracles. Uh, to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. All right, verse 8 there. Let me read it one more time. But to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Now, I want to talk about wisdom and knowledge. And for right now, let me just use them both. I don't want to say interchangeably, but let me use them both together because a lot of times in the Bible, they're used together. Knowledge and wisdom, they're used in the same sentence. Okay, I'll show you a few verses here, but uh, first, let me look at... uh, I want to remind you of this. We looked at this last week, and so go to James chapter 1. This is really important to... I, I, I brought it up by way of just an introduction last week, but it's very important to this first lesson that has to do with wisdom. James chapter 1, in verse 5, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Look at verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. Now go over to Luke chapter 11, and all these kind of link together really well to show us that there's a link between spiritual gifts and wisdom. Now, again, we're talking about wisdom and knowledge, and it seems like in this passage in 1 Corinthians 12, it's saying that wisdom and knowledge are gifts of the Spirit, but then there also seems to be this overlying uh, kind of connection there where if you want power from the Lord, if you want spiritual gifts to be able to do His work to whatever capacity He wants you to do, we need to pray for wisdom. Okay, so there's some kind of... uh, link there between wisdom and spiritual gifts, okay? Luke chapter 11, verse 13. 
Nothing wrong with repetition. If you missed it last week, you'll get it again. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Okay, so we're asking for the Holy Spirit, and, uh, and this is what we need to do, is ask the Lord for wisdom, ask Him for the Holy Spirit, ask Him for um, these gifts of the Spirit. <clears throat> Now, let me give you from the Bible uh, some examples where wisdom and knowledge is spoken of. And kind of generally, uh, right now, I'm not going to give a definite, I'm not going to make a distinction between the two. I just want to show you some different ways that they're used as it, is, uh, as it relates to a spiritual gift. Okay, uh, God granting somebody wisdom to do his work is what we're talking about. Okay, so Exodus 31 to start out with. Exodus 31, this is the building of the tabernacle, and God grants wisdom and knowledge to the workmen who are going to do the work there in the tabernacle. Exodus 31, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, interesting, sometimes understanding is used interchangeably with knowledge, and I'll try to remember to explain that here in a little bit, uh, but wisdom and knowledge, you could throw understanding in there as well because sometimes all three are used, but a lot of times understanding has to is kind of the same as knowledge. If you know something, you kind of understand that thing, and so uh, oftentimes those are, those are linked together. All right, but wisdom and knowledge... God gave, granted that the Spirit of God uh, enabled these people to be able to do this work. You could read down that whole chapter and see how they did that. Second Chronicles chapter one. Second Chronicles chapter one. This is a popular verse, a famous verse, I should say. <clears throat> Look at verse ten. Uh, well, let's start with verse 7. You get the context. You remember what we're talking about here. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Right, here's a spiritual gift. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father and hath made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this thy people uh, that is so great? And then God, because he asked for that and not riches and all that, he gives him wisdom and knowledge, and then he also grants him some wealth and some other things. All right, now look at Isaiah 11. This is an interesting passage. Isaiah 11, and I don't want to get too, go too far down this rabbit hole, but if you think this is interesting, then, you know, tune in. Otherwise, I'll be back in a couple seconds. <laughs> okay, so Isaiah 11 is often referred to when you get to Revelation and it talks about Jesus and it says the one who had the seven spirits. Okay, what are the seven spirits? Now, I think this came from a Catholic doctrine, so I don't give it a whole lot of weight, but uh, I, or, you know, some Catholic, uh, ancient Catholic father or whatever, I think was the one who kind of first started this. But this is it's clearly a reference to Jesus. Now, whether or not that ties into the seven spirits in Isaiah, I mean, it could. I guess my biggest problem is in studying this, I have a hard time finding seven, um, but that's another matter. Maybe I'm just missing something. But Isaiah 11, here's what I want to show you because this, I'm, I'm back on track now, okay? <laughs> uh, this is um, a reference to Jesus. There's no doubt about it. Let's, let's uh Make it clear here, verse 2, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. I'm sorry, we've got to start with verse 1. 
And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, capital B, or he's talking about Jesus, shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him a quick, uh, of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove, reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity, and it goes on there. Okay, But what I wanted to show you is this is a reference to Jesus clearly, and it says, in him the spirit of knowledge, uh, I'm sorry, the spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and spirit of knowledge, all those kind of go together. So you got wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Uh, these are certainly not just a gift of the spirit, but in the case of Jesus, he embodies the spirit. Okay, he, he is God. And so obviously the Spirit rests upon him fully, and he has all of these gifts that the Spirit gives. And, one, and some of the, the clear uh, category there is wisdom and understanding. And then the Bible says that in Christ are hid the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You don't have to go there, but Colossians 2.3 says that in Jesus is hid the, the, the treasures of wisdom and and knowledge. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that throughout the Bible, this is used in a, in a link to the Spirit of God giving gifts to people. He gives wisdom and he gives knowledge, okay? So now let's talk for a second about why is wisdom and knowledge used together? How are they different from one another when in some places they seem to be the same thing? For an example, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it says both. It says the beginning of knowledge. It says the beginning of wisdom. It might say beginning of understanding somewhere. I can't remember. But the spirit, the fear of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Also says beginning of wisdom. So sometimes people will say it differently. They're not reading from the wrong version. They're just reading a different verse from the King James. Okay. Uh, so there's there seems to be one sense where it's all the same, but there also seems to be a sense in which they're different and. Kind of the point of this message is to show you the difference and how they relate to one another, okay? So, number one, wisdom and knowledge are closely related. We've already kind of looked at that. Uh, we can see the verses that I just read, how they're related. But now go to, uh, well, you don't have to go there. I just kind of quoted it about the fear of the Lord and and. Uh, uh, is beginning of wisdom, beginning of knowledge. Proverbs 1 7 and Proverbs 9 10, if you wanted to double check those, uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, back to our text, 1 Corinthians 12. I want to draw you a quick little, uh, well, I guess not really a diagram. I just want to write some things up here to kind of break these. Uh, these parts down, okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 11, look at verse, starting verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So let me write up here, because I think these are in the same category, all right? So we got, uh, we got wisdom by, by the same Spirit, and we have... Uh, knowledge. By the same Spirit. All right, then he says in verse 9 to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, healing by the same Spirit. All right, so now let's put this here faith. By the, by the same Spirit. What did I say? Healing? Healing by the same Spirit. Now, the next one, I'm going to put in that same category. Verse 10. <clears throat> to another, the working of miracles. Okay, let me just add that here. Uh, working... Of miracles. 
Now, that's just my, the, this isn't an inspired list of divisions here, okay? This is just my, um, my own dividing here, rightly dividing. <laughs> All right, now this, is, this is my dividing. Wisdom and knowledge clearly seem to be related, right? Faith, healing, and we talk about faith healing all the time, like with the Pentecostals. Uh, faith and healing seem to go together. Faith and the working of miracles seems to go together. So just hold on, we're, we're talking about that gift on another day. Uh, but I want to show you how these are related. Verse 11, but, I'm sorry, uh, uh, to one working in miracles, to another prophecy, and another discerning of spirits. I put these together. Can't say for sure that God meant for that to happen, but prophecy and um, discerning of spirits, is that right? Nobody can read my writing anyway. <laughs> All right. Then it says, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, interpretations of tongues, okay? <clears throat> diverse types of tongues. And to another, interpretations of tongues. All right, I'm sure you can read all that. Do you at least, whether you can see there or not, <laughs> did you kind of follow how I'm, I got these in the same category? I think it's without a doubt these two are related, okay? Diverse tongues and interpretations of tongues, those are definitely related. Prophecy and discerning of spirits. The Bible says not to just believe every spirit, but try the spirits. And so, like, uh, you know, there's, there's a prophecy, but then there's also false prophets that need to be discerned whether or not they're false prophets or not. <laughs> okay, so I guess, I guess you say that's a gift. Now, I'm going to talk about all these gifts another time and, and, and bring up some other verses with some other gifts that are related to them, whatever. <clears throat> Faith, we'll talk about healing and miracles and stuff stuff like that as it related to Paul's, I mean, uh, yeah, Paul's day. We're obviously only talking about this one today, but I wanted to show you how all these lists kind of work together. It's like one person has this and another person has this, and they're closely related. One person can speak languages very well. Another person can interpret to other people what that person said, which, by the way, you know, Again, we'll talk about tongues on another day. But if we're just talking about languages, being able to interpret is a whole lot different. It's a different skill than knowing how to speak a language. Okay, Just because somebody can speak Spanish doesn't mean they're, they could just interpret from Spanish to English and kind of do that in their mind real quickly on the spot. Would you agree it's kind of like a, it's a separate? Of course you're going to agree. because <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it's, it's kind of a different gift. Just because you speak that language doesn't mean you have that. So, like, there's a lot of things that could go into that. But I'm showing you how I think that these are kind of related. Although they are uh, closely related, we also see that they're different, just like in this case. Being able to have a speak diverse tongues, speak lots of different languages, like some missionaries have a great gift to be able to do that. <laughs> isn't exactly the same gift as being able to interpret those, but they're certainly related. Being able to prophesy, speak what the Lord has put on your heart to speak, His Word, and being able to discern whether or not that person is a false prophet or not, you know, are two different gifts. And the same is true for a person who has wisdom and a person that has knowledge, different gifts, okay? So that uh, brings me to number two. So number one was this, wisdom and knowledge are closely related. We get that. That was easy to, to point out when I first started the lesson. 
<clears throat> but I want you to understand now how you can have one gift without the other gift. You can have one gift and not have the other gift. This is just how God delivers gifts to people. He might give you one of these and not the other. How then can you have wisdom and not have knowledge? Or how can you have knowledge and not have wisdom? Well, <clears throat> here's why. A person with knowledge, or like I said, sometimes understanding is interchangeable, okay? A person that understands something, he has knowledge of it, is not necessarily uh, somebody who has wisdom. And I'll show you why. Some people, for instance, I'm trying to think, I, I should have uh, worked harder at this illustration, but. Some people, for instance, have an ability, they have a knowledge and an understanding of math. All right? They could just, by book knowledge, they could just uh, quote out all the formulas and all that kind of stuff. And they could, you know, you're just like a human calculator. You know, you throw some numbers at them and they just, they just, they just got it down. But that doesn't mean that that person, although they have that bit of knowledge, is, is necessarily, now they could be wise as well, but doesn't necessarily mean that they could apply that knowledge. It doesn't mean that they could teach you math. Some people have an ability, they understand it, but they can also teach it. You know, they understand it, and they can also use that to become, you know, a rocket scientist or something like that. Not everybody has it. Just because you have knowledge of something, which it could be, a, I mean, some people have great memories and, and great ability to just kind of, uh, figure those things out, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have the ability to use that in in a wise way. Okay, <clears throat> a person that has wisdom, and even even if they don't have knowledge of everything, they have wisdom. It means that they can decide what to do with something. Okay, now here's where it's really interesting. You know, as a pastor, I think about this and and. I imagine anybody who is like a CEO of a company or, or uh, whatever, you know, if you own a business, if you feel like in order to have that business you ha and to be the boss of that business, you have to be smarter than everybody in every area. You have to understand it all. You have to know how to work everything. You have to have all the knowledge. Well, here's the problem. If, if that were true, that the smartest person on the job is the boss, that means the company will never grow because nobody will ever be smarter than the boss. He's limited the amount of knowledge that that company can have because he's the smartest, and he only hires people who aren't smart, as smart as him so that he can show them how smart he is. It's not going anywhere, okay? So just because you have a lot of knowledge, you know, doesn't mean that you necessarily have the wisdom of what to do with the knowledge. So a, a, a CEO, and in the case of a pastor, I believe it's the same thing, or here, here's another example, the, a president or uh, somebody in the political office, not necessarily just the smartest person that has all the facts and all the knowledge, but they could have wisdom that enables them to know who to ask and to know to say, okay, just give, me the, just give me the basics. I don't have to understand this. I don't, you know, you understand it. That's what I got you for. You just tell me the basics. They tell you the basics, and then this person has enough wisdom to figure out, okay, now I can take that information that you just gave me, and I can apply it here, and we can get the right people. Maybe they're delegating. Maybe there's a bit of wisdom involved in, in delegating and, and all that stuff. But, but this is how knowledge and wisdom are different. Now, I'll say this, that we want both. We all want, you know, okay, let's just take away the spiritual element. Now, by the way, when, again, I want to remind you, when we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, this is not the works of the flesh. This is not, for instance, Solomon had great wisdom, but the wisdom that he had of this world didn't get him very far. The wisdom that he prayed for and that God gave him was the ability to discern and to understand the things of God. So thank the Lord he gave us Proverbs and he gave us Ecclesiastes that had some great information in there for us to, to use. And, and, the, and the, spirit, you know, the Spirit, of course, guided him to do that. <clears throat> but he had a lot of other wisdom and knowledge that didn't necessarily amount to a whole lot. 
But what we're talking about as far as spiritual gifts is not the things of this world, okay? The Bible differentiates in many places, and I started to make a list of these, but I didn't think I'd have time. Uh, the Bible differentiates between the wisdom of this world or the wisdom of the flesh and the wisdom of God. Clear difference, okay? One sensual and, uh, and uh, in fact, I wonder if I do have that. Uh, I don't know if I wrote it down. It's in James. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I want to go there or not. Okay, but the idea is that you know these things are not uh, of of God, but they're of they're 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 devilish. The Bible says. Okay, so uh, anyway, so there's a distinction between the wisdom of man's wisdom, wisdom of this earth, and wisdom um, that God gives. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes, however, God. Gr- it gives us wisdom, and he gives us the ability to understand things, and that would require that we then understand secular things as well and be able to use that secular information to benefit God's work. He, gives, he grants that all the time. The Apostle Paul is a great example because the Apostle Paul, you know, when he would go in to preach the gospel somewhere, he would have this ability to know their laws and to know what their prophets of their people say and he, he had all that knowledge, and God gave him wisdom to take that knowledge and to use it uh, to be able to win them to the Lord or whatever. Okay, so there are times where, yes, if God gives somebody a spiritual gift of wisdom and spiritual gift of knowledge, it might translate into worldly knowledge and worldly wisdom as well. Uh, but um, we're talking about spiritual wisdom, okay? And spiritual wisdom, you can have, uh, I mean, we should want both of those. We should want. God, give me knowledge and give me wisdom to use that knowledge and to apply it so that I could do your work. But remember last week I said this in the introduction, just because somebody has a special gift of, first, let's say, mercy. There's, Romans 12 talks about the gift of mercy. Just because one person has a gift that is just kind of natural for them to be mercy to people that are hurting or people that have needs, doesn't mean that the other person that doesn't have that gift shouldn't seek mercy. The Bible makes it clear uh, that we're all supposed to love mercy, and we're all supposed to have a desire for that. The Bible talks about coveting to prophesy, like we all should want to be able to speak the words of God. Uh, We all should want all of these things, but God will give us our several ability as he wants us to have it. Okay, so don't think, well, you know what, wisdom and knowledge just isn't my uh, gift, and so I'm not going to try to get smarter. I'm not going to try to understand things. I'm not going to, you know, ask for wisdom. No, no, no. We all should want these things, and we all should try to have these things, but realize that some people have, that is their spiritual gift, to have knowledge or to have wisdom. These two are separate, but I want to show you the last point now, is that a person with wisdom will seek knowledge. Now, I'm not going to bore you and take you through all the list. It's a study you could do on your own if you want, but almost every time that those words are used together, you can kind of see how a person with wisdom is going to seek after knowledge, okay? So as I explained earlier, let's say the CEO of the company has wisdom. He has the ability to kind of like um, take everything in and decide how it should be used and kind of say like, no, I know you're smart. I know you know more than I do, but I don't think that's a good idea or whatever. You know, just because they have that ability, what was I going to say? Okay, uh, they, that person will also probably say, I need to look in a little bit further. I need to get some knowledge on this, on this subject because I don't understand it. And so how can I have wisdom if I don't have the knowledge? So oftentimes the person with wisdom will seek after knowledge. Let me give you a couple verses. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Now, know that all these are going to be more of a study. This, this is a Bible study, but the way you can apply it to yourself, number one, you know, if you're not sure what your gift is, you can consider all these kinds of things and see, like, uh, where, you know, God could be using this in you, but also to just recognize it in other people, and then finally to just be able to pray. You're praying for wisdom, right? You're praying that God would give you an understanding of what he wants you to do, and, uh, and see what your gift is, okay? So that's why we're doing this study. Proverbs chapter 
8, look at verse 12. And I could give you tons of verses on this. I'm just going to give you a couple. This is where wisdom is uh, personified, and, and she says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Now, if you are wisdom, then you don't need knowledge, right? No, wisdom needs, like, knowledge is like wisdom's food. <laughs> wisdom is seeking knowledge so that it could apply that knowledge uh, with, uh, you know, and, and use, use wisdom. Okay, look at chapter 14, Proverbs 14. And verse 6. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Okay, so there's this sense in which one person uh, is seeking wisdom but can't find it, right, because they're scorners. God's not going to grant them this wisdom. But then there is that person who has wisdom that God's given him, and he finds uh, understanding. It's easy for him uh, that hath understanding. I mean, so he findeth knowledge, okay? And so the po this point helps us to understand the difference between knowledge and wisdom because the person with wisdom seeks knowledge. But there are people that have great amounts of knowledge, but God hasn't necessarily granted them this wisdom and the ability to use that knowledge, which is why, again, if you're the president of the United States or the CEO of a company or whatever, I, I know we're getting away from the spiritual things, uh, but I don't want to constantly be talking about the church and I'm the pastor and so but. The person in leadership who has wisdom, hopefully, they want people in the church who are very knowledgeable about certain things so that they cannot necessarily, you know, rise up to be able to lead in that position, but they can use that wealth of knowledge that they have for the person with wisdom to be able to use. Does that make sense? To delegate and to find, make sure that uh, they'll use this for the job that needs to be done. Again, if you, okay, so again, I can't help but apply this to myself whenever I'm reading through it. And so, as for an example, if God gave me an uh, ability, as, as small as it might be, if he gives me the ability to kind of oversee things, that is going to require some wisdom, right? And he gives me that ability, I think that since I've, become a pastor, I have had a stronger desire to kind of learn things. Like, I need to know how this works. I need to understand this so that I can apply it and all that. But you know, there are some things that I've found, I, I, just to be honest with you, I'm never going to learn. I just can't grasp it. I could, you, I could ask you, I, if you want to know, ask my wife. But you, you, there's some things. I am never going to have a good sense of direction. I can about promise you that, <laughs> right? Some people have a wonderful sense of direction. They could tell you all the names of the cities and all the blocks and the streets and the addresses. And some people, uh, they just know all that stuff. They just have a built-in compass. I don't have that, which is why, like, when we do soul winning, I, when I first started as a pastor and we start these soul winning events, I said, I'm going to tell you right now, I need to delegate the person that makes the maps and tells everyone where to go because I, I'm just not going to be able to do that. Everybody felt really awkward at first. It's like, but you're the pastor. You're supposed to be telling us where to go. And I'm like, trust me, you don't want me to do that, <laughs> okay? Now, here we are a few years later. They've driven in the car with me, and they know. <laughs> and so now, when we have one of these things and people come, they're just like, uh, no, you don't want to ask pastor about that, <laughs> okay? They say it respectfully, but everybody knows I am terrible at direction. Another thing, again, I've made this very clear many times in my life, Math is not something that just sticks in my mind. Like you throw some numbers out me, and I uh, some numbers out there, and I my brain just locks up, and I just can't process it. Maybe I could work at it, and I could get to a point where I could understand a little bit better. But you know what? I have enough wisdom to say, "Hey, Valor, can you do this math for me?" <laughs> because she's got that ability, <laughs> right? And so at the I should be as a pastor seeking to understand things better and to be able to do things better. But I don't necessarily need that to have wisdom. You understand, that's, this, is the, this is the difference between the two. Okay, so wisdom and knowledge. 
We should want both of them. And if you have wisdom, if you have the gift of wisdom, you're going to be seeking knowledge and you're going to really be wanting knowledge. Uh, some people have great knowledge, but they don't necessarily, they're never going to be teachers or they're never going to be people who are in charge of using that knowledge. They just have the knowledge and it's okay. That's the gift that God gave them. Okay, but other people have another ability where they don't necessarily have all the knowledge, but they have wisdom and so that wisdom allows them to kind of get as much knowledge as they can so that they can make it into practical use. All right, that's all I've got. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, and I thank you for uh, the spirit that gives gifts liberally to all men and uh, all believers who want to serve you and work in the church. Lord, I pray that you would uh, grant to us wisdom, help us as we seek to do your work and And seek your face to find out what it is you'd have us to do. I pray that you would open all of our eyes so that we can do uh, a little bit better and a little bit um, more efficiently, Lord, uh, do the work you've called us to do by understanding these things. And I pray that you would use them. Uh, Only you could grant that power. We can't muster it up ourselves. And I pray that you would use it then to do the work that you want to do so that you could be glorified in the end. We know that's the ultimate goal. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.